Have you ever been boxing, training, and your arms are getting tired? What happens? They start to drop, and then you start to get into bad habits, throwing punches, bringing them back down here. Because you're tired, your arms are dropping. Well, on this video, we're going to give you a dumbbell circuit so that never happens again. So you're going to develop upper body strength like Mike Tyson. And for this video, I've brought along my good friend, BG Goddard, who is a strength and conditioning expert, also the former fitness director of Men's Health. Let's get into it. So, BG, what we got here? So one of Mike Tyson's many nicknames was Kid Dynamite. So we're calling this Dumbbell Dynamite, and it's six movements that work your entire upper body. We actually treat it like a boxing round. Do each movement for 30 seconds each, three minutes total. So you could work this into your boxing conditioning. Again, it'll give you that nice yoked upper body, but in particular, a lot of stamina for your right. shoulders, your arms. So what we're gonna do is this. There's six movements. First one, and we start with the hardest movement. You wanna load this for the first exercise, which is the most challenging. Then you don't set these dumbbells down, for three minutes. So the right. pump is precious, okay? <laughs> so when we start with a lighter weight and then progress over time? Yes, I would start with five or 10 pound dumbbells just to feel this out or even warm up in the circuit in the same format, 30 seconds each movement, no rest between. I'm gonna use a pair of 25s. I've been doing this for a long time. This never gets easier. Right. Because you can also, what's great about working for time is you can get more reps in the same amount of time. Okay. So maybe you start by getting six to eight reps of each movement in 30 seconds, then you can do 10, 12. Once you can do 15 reps of each movement, especially the first one, that's when you'd want to look to bumping the weight up about two and a half to five pounds. And also I like doing three minute rounds because what it does when you're training three minute rounds, you know, when you're hitting the heavy bag in sparring or, or doing circuits, it gets your mind used to it. When you're in the ring, you always want to, you know, be aware of how much time you've got left. So this is only going to help with that as well. 100% sports specific conditioning exactly, is always yeah. great. So the first exercise of these six. And again, this is the hardest one and you pick the weight and use that same weight for this movement the whole way through, overhead tricep extension. So we get the weight overhead. And I'll show some modifications on this. The big focus here is I'm moving only at the elbow. I'm gonna inhale through the nose as I lower the weight. So ideally the bells touch my upper back and then I will exhale up and I'll just repeat for time. Hmm. Right. So good for strengthening the triceps. Again, more developed triceps mean what? More punching strength and right, power, yeah. right? As those elbow, elbow extensors are really active on your punches. And anything overhead is also super challenging too because you actually get a natural blood flow restriction because it's your body has to work up against gravity to send blood to the working muscles and oxygen to the working muscles. So this is a, such a challenging movement and it works parts of your triceps that can only be worked overhead. The long head, the big meaty thick part of your tricep attaches into your scapula. So you only really work it when your arms overhead. So that's why this is like the most challenging triceps exercise. It's also one of the most challenging upper body movements, period. Right, yeah, that's great. And as well, this is good for when you're inside the clinch, you know, getting, getting your strong flat when you're pushing out. 100%, right? yeah. it can help fortify the elbows. It's great for shoulder mobility. And if it's too tough with the dumbbells apart, just put them together. You get a little extra stability that way. And it's a little bit easier to execute the movement, especially if you're doing multiple rounds of this, you can back off from going independent to together for more stability and strength. And then, like he's mentioned earlier on, you can always go lighter if it's too much. If it's interfering with your form and you're having bad form, definitely go lighter. 100%. When you're working for three minutes straight, lightweight feels heavy. Right, yeah. That's the benefit of this. You want to focus not on pick a weight that is light, so you can execute it perfectly and it, the pump is gonna be there because you're going nonstop on these movements. Okay, great. So you're not even gonna put these weights down, we're gonna go straight into the next go one. Right into the next one, and I'll show modification in this one too, but it's the upright row. And this movement is great for developing your upper traps and the medial or lateral delts. So it gives you a lot of thickness. You know, boxing is about winning a fight, but you wanna look good too. Yeah. So wider shoulders makes your waist look smaller, a little more aesthetically pleasing. And again, all the top fighters had that really nice shoulder sweep. Yeah. So all we're gonna do here is, we're gonna pull the weight straight up the body, exhale up. Now, a lot of people say never do this exercise, it's bad for your shoulders. Well, the studies on this movement show, as long as you don't take your upper arm higher than parallel to the floor, it's a safe movement. If you go too high, you can get some impingement. Right. So just bring it right to about chest level, And if that bothers you still, you can modify what's called the lateral raise, trying to get your pinky up more for more lateral delt activation and just come out to the side. <sighs> On all these movements, by the way, we exhale through the mouth going up to power the hardest part of the exercise. We inhale through the nose going down to energize and fuel your working muscles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like everything in breathing is super important. 100%. Uh, 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 it might take time. I know teaching boxing, when I was teaching you boxing, 
breathing is always something that takes a long time to get. It really and, does. And when I do strength work, breathing is hard for me. So I've got to really focus on that as well. 100%. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to number three. Keep all of them weights, me. You know, let me put them down. Biceps! <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go. A lot of people do curls, uh, starting with their arms like this. I like to actually start in this one palms open. So this is great for your posture. You get the rotator cuff and scapular muscles working. So it's great for the back side of your body and just overall mobility. And you're going to exhale through the mouth coming up, <sighs> inhale down and moving mainly at the elbow joint. That, that elbow can come a little bit forward at the top, but not too much. And just blowing up those biceps. And this will help you particularly, right? Bicep strength is great for clinching. Yeah. You know, yeah. elbow flexors kind of pulling in. Yeah. And uh, man, this will blow up your guns big time. Yeah, yeah. Is there any more benefits? I, I guess, I mean, that's the biggest one there with, with doing bicep curls for boxing is, like, you know, when, you, when you're in the clinch, which all, we always end up in the clinch. Uh, but anything else would you say? Well, a lot of it too is, even if it's not a specific muscle to punching, your body needs balance, right? So if you're going to do a lot of tricep work, what opposes the tricep? The biceps, right? right? Okay, what opposes okay. the back? The chest. Yeah. So a lot of people do too much chest. People tend to do actually too much chest and bicep, right. not enough tricep and back, but you want balance in all things, right? Otherwise you get, your, your symmetry is off, you're gonna open yourself up to more injuries if you're not working the opposing muscle groups across a joint. Yeah, I've just thought of another benefit there as well. It's like in, in boxing, you know, your, your hands are down, you bring your hands up. And with this, you're bringing your hands up with 100%. the curl, but you're wearing, what, 14 ounce gloves here, He's got 20, uh, 25 pound Oh yeah, those, those gloves so, will feel like nothing. Yeah, so your gloves will feel like nothing when you've got them up. And you know, instead of thinking body parts, you think movement. It's the elbow movement, flexion. Yeah. Okay. You know, elbow flexion is a fundamental thing for upper body movement and you're gonna find yourself flexing your elbow a ton in the ring. Okay, I can see the sweat dripping everywhere now. Let's move on to number four. Number four is the overhead press. And by the way, if you really struggle with that tricep extension, you could just do the overhead press twice or what you do is you do the lowering portion of that tricep extension and then you roll it forward and then assist on the press oh, nice. up. Right. But right now we're gonna go palms facing, inhale down, exhale up. And this is the number one shoulders exercise, period, an overhead press. And if you wanna try and you know, channel, channel your inner, inner uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, these are called Arnold presses. So you start like this and you rotate on the way up and then come back down like this. And that, that rotational action actually gets all three heads of your shoulders, the front, the side, and the rear and it's great for the external rotators, which is very important. You know, shoulder injuries are very common in boxing. You know, people will overreach or again, yeah. you get, someone pulls on your arm in a clinch. Yeah, so yeah. again, anytime you can add more strength and stability to the shoulder joint, the better. It's only doing great. All right, moving on to number five. Bench rows. So now this is like the ultimate backside exercise, not just upper back, but also glutes and hamstrings. So I'm gonna hinge at the hips, flat back, chest up. If you can only get down about right here, that's fine, but ideally, you want to get enough movement and mobility so your trunk is parallel to the floor. And I like to do a slight little angle here. You can go here and pull low and get more mid back. You can go elbows out and get more upper back. But I like a slight angle. It feels really good in the joints. <sighs> Exhale up and pull low to the hip instead of the shoulder. The big mistake on this movement is people, they, they pull too high. See what happened to my shoulder yeah, there? It yeah. goes forward. Pull about 90 degree angles. And this one, again, you're gonna pump up the whole back side of the body. And again, the show muscles are in front of your body. The go muscles are on the back side of your body. And that's also, for combat athletes, the posterior chain, as it's called, is the most undertrained area of the body. Yeah, that's great. Okay, we got one more, one more. Thank God. <laughs> Real quick, I'm stopping the video, putting me coat on, going into the garden and telling you about today's sponsor. Now, I want to give you a supplement for free, and that is Onnit Alpha Brain. I first heard about this from UFC commentator Joe Rogan, who swears by it. So I thought, well, if it's good for him, it'll be good for me. And I take it, and it is fantastic. This really helps support my memory, my focus, my creativity everything like that and I also like to take it before workouts as well so check it out click the link below get 15 days free trial of Onnit Alpha Brain also go to onnit.com forward slash boxing and you get 10% off their entire website check it out guys you're going to love it and you can thank me later and now this is the classic Mike Tyson movement he used to do like so many shrugs with a 66 pound barbell but dumbbells are better because you actually get more range of motion and mobility with it and don't do it like people loaded up really heavy and they're kind of just going <laughs> Momentum based, this is about activation of the upper traps, which pull your shoulders up. So keep it away and keep your rear delts active. Pull it up to your ears, exhale up. 
inhale down. Oh, so you're keeping the weights out there. Yes, that's what makes it more challenging. That's what makes a lightweight feel heavy. If I'm going really fast and arms close, I'm not right. really working my traps. Right. I'm just looking like I'm, I'm moving weight, but the weight's really moving me. Right, okay. Moving the weight with intention, it's away from the side. And then really focusing, getting all the way down to make it a mobility movement. More range of motion, more potential muscle gain. Yeah, this is something that I used to do when I was a kid. I never knew the benefits of it. My coach had us doing this when I was 14, but I, I didn't have the arms out. I would just be like, <laughs> exactly what yeah. you say, rather than that, much more controlled. 100%. You either go through the motions fast to get it done, or you try to activate the target muscle. And that's what building muscle is all about. You need to be a bodybuilder. In fact, getting too much muscle can slow you down a bit in the ring, right. but as long as we're not going you know, too crazy with it, you're trying to build the muscle in the target area. So if we're doing a bicep curl and you're not feeling your biceps work because you're swinging and going crazy, well, it might look cool, it might look great using a heavy weight, you're not gonna build your biceps. Right, okay. Because you're using your whole body. Yeah. Yeah, now you can put them down, mate. Now you can relax. You've had them for a lot longer than three minutes. Now we've done that three minute circuit. How often would you recommend doing this? And when would you do it? Would you do it before training? Would you do it during, before a warm up? Would you do it after training? After you've got your boxing out of the way? What do you recommend on that? So uh, for beginners, you're new to this, uh, you can treat it as like a quick 10 minute workout. Do the three minute round, rest a minute, just like you would in boxing. Do it twice more, you're done in 10 minutes. So a quick three round full upper body workout you could do as a great finisher to a main session or maybe, on, maybe you're, you have a strength day where you're where training strength and the other day you're working your boxing skills. So you can have it, doing it on a separate day might make sense. Advanced trainees, okay? You could start using this as a finisher. Right, yeah. So you do all your work and you add it at the end or you do this three minute round with the dumbbells, rest a minute, work the heavy bag for three minutes. Oh wow. So now you're bringing in that competitive fatigue. So yeah. you go to the bag, I mean, the bag is gonna be giving you way more resistance in terms of what it's gonna feel like after doing this, and you come back to this again, and now that same weight might feel twice as heavy, which is yeah. why, again, you'd wanna start light on this. But that's yeah. a great way to really challenge your muscles on the bag and make it more upper body intensive by coming back and forth between dumbbell dynamite and three minute rounds on the heavy bag. Yeah, that makes sense. But for this, you need to have some dumbbells. Now, if you haven't got dumbbells and you wanna do a workout like Mike Tyson, click here and watch this bodyweight workout from Mike Tyson. Click here next and watch this.